Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use the instrv function. <laughs> Stands for in string reverse in Microsoft Access. I'm going to show you how to find something inside a string from the end of the string. Okay. Now, this is both a beginner. Oh, there we go. Beginner and developer video because it works both in regular like queries and forms and stuff. And it also works in VBA. So the same same function works in two places. Now, this function is directly related to the in string function, which works the other way. If you want to find whether or not a particular string appears inside another string, use in string and it finds the location starting from the left. OK, it counts the number of positions from the left. So go watch this video first if you're not familiar with in-string and it'll help you understand in-string reverse better. And also go watch my video on string functions. All right, left, right, mid. I talk about in-string in this one as well. We're going to also use the right string in today's video. These are free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them. All right, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you'd like to. And one thing that I hate about finding information online when you when you use the Google machine and, and pull up articles and stuff is you'll find a lot of references for this is how the in string function works. So this is how the left or whatever functions work. And they give you like really silly examples like, oh, if you want to find the first position of the letter I inside the word America. But OK, I like practical examples, so I don't like doing a video unless I have a practical example. And this is one that came up a little while ago. Um, I had a student of mine who had a uh, a a path and file name in their customer table to the person's profile picture. So let's add that real quick. Um, let's just add a field called profile pick, and that'll be short text. All right. And in that field, she had stored the path and file name to where their picture was. And she wanted to be able to pull out just the file name part. Now, yes, I know for you advanced developer students who've taken my uh, my my classes on the file IO system. There is a function already that um, that can pull out the file name from a path. But if you just want a simple way to do that, we can look at a string like c colon backslash pictures backslash like Richard dot JPEG. And all we have to do is say, OK, where is the position of the last backslash in that string? Everything to the right of that is going to be my file name. OK, maybe D colon backslash profiles backslash Joe dot JPEG or a Z colon backslash server backslash database, right? Backslash pictures backslash Tim dot GIF, whatever. OK, or you might not have a backslash. It might just be pick dot JPEG. All right, we'll see how that comes out. OK, all we want to find is where is that last slash? That last backslash character. All right, so save that. And and this is just one example. I've used in string and in string reverse in a million different situations. In fact, I got a video coming up in a couple of days that's also going to use it. So I figured this is a good time to cover it for you guys. And I didn't really spend a lot of time on in string reverse in my regular full courses because, well, I spend a lot of time on all the rest of the string functions, but this one just doesn't get a lot of love. But it's very handy. All right, so let's go make a query, create query design. And let's pull in the customer table and let's bring in just that field. All right, take a peek. There they are. And let's not deal with all these null values. So we're going to set this down here is not null. If you're not familiar with null, I got a video on it. Of course, I got a video on everything. I'll put a link down below. And I'll also put a link to my images video. If you want to learn how to take this file and display the person's profile picture from that photo on the hard drive, then I covered that in my images photo. All right, so now I got just these guys. OK, so what I want to do next is I want to use the in string reverse function to say, find me that guy. It's going to say, find me the backslash character, right? The first backslash character starting from the right side of the string. That's what the reverse means. Both in string and in string reverse still return the position. It's not it's not a count of characters from the right. It's still the count from the left. OK, like this one, for example, is still going to return, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever that is, 20 something. All right. It's not going to return just eight. 
All right, it still counts from the left, but it finds the one starting from the right. That's how the thing works. I know some people get confused about that. All right, so next, right over here in the next column, I love this little feature. I just discovered this a little while ago. All right, I'm gonna zoom in though so you can see it better. Okay, Shift F2. All right, we're gonna find the position of the last slash. Actually, it's technically the last backslash, I know. And Guns N' Roses has nothing to do with this, so don't sue me. In string reverse. All right, what's the field? Profile, pick, comma, find me the backslash. Okay, close it up. And now if I run it, there we go. There's the position of that last backslash character. Notice pick has none, so it's a zero. All right, and that's okay, it'll still work. Now we take the right number of characters off of that string after the backslash, and that'll give us the file name. Or the left will give us the path if you want the path only. Okay, you could do the extension too, but the extension uh, that depends on you know because you could have multiple things. If you find the last dot, that should give you the extension. If you want like dot gif dot jpeg whatever. If you want to display pictures differently. All right, so now we need the right characters. How many characters? We'll take twelve and subtract that from the entire length of the string, and that'll give you the uh, the file name. All right. Ready? Next column over here. <laughs> Am I using this too much? Okay. That's a Windows feature, by the way. Just double tap the control key. It works in Windows 11. Not sure if it works in 10 and earlier. All right. Shift F2. Zoom in. Now we're going to say the file name only is going to be the right of profile pick, comma, how many characters? The length. Covered that in the strings video. The length of profile pick minus last slash. So if the whole thing's 20 characters long and the last slash is at eight, you'll get 20 minus eight, or give me the 12 most characters. Ready, hit okay, and run it, and there's your file name. Isn't that party? And that is a practical example for how to find the file name using, well, practical example for the in-string reverse function. You know what I mean, you know what I'm talking about. All right, I hate academic stuff, That's just, okay. But there you go. There's your tech help video for today about the in-string reverse function. Again, you'll see this coming up in a couple days in another video that I've got uh, planned. And uh, I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really wanna learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long, you could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. 
And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.